Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Appreciating Rama. In the previous class we had seen uh, Restoration Rama. And uh, what you are going to see today is actually uh, a part of that. Uh, it is uh, more or less the same topic but we are going to see in uh, depth. It is about comedy of minors or restoration comedy. So there may be some kind of repetition, please forgive me for that. comedy of uh, manners <coughs> in english literature the term comedy of manners also called anti sentimental comedy describes a genre of realistic satirical comedy of the restoration period that questions and comments upon the manners and social conventions of a greatly sophisticated artificial society so the essence of comedy of manners is actually satire they want to make fun of the aristocracy the sophisticated artificial society <coughs> you have some pics comedy of manners is a genre of comedy that flourished on the english stage during the restoration period plays of this type are typically set in the world of the upper class and ridicule the pretensions of those who consider themselves socially superior deflating them with satire okay deflate means actually kind of uh, like taking the air out of a, a tube uh, it means almost like kind of insulting them so that was the aim of uh, comedy of manners trying to uh, poke fun at the sophisticated or socially superior people with witty dialogue and cleverly constructed scenarios comedies of manners comment on the standards and mores of society and explore the relationships of the sexes marriage is a frequent subject so some of the elements of comedy of manners is witty dialogue and the cleverly constructed scenarios and of course they comment on the standards and mores of society mores means actually uh, code of behavior or moral code <coughs> typically there is little depth of characterization instead the playwright used stock character types here yeah, we will see more about stock character type in next slide but you can give some uh, you can see some examples of stock character like the fool uh, like the clown sometimes there is a clown there the schemer uh, one who is plotting or conspiring the hypocrite uh, one who is you know acting too much uh, there is no kind of sincerity in him or honesty the jealous husband the interfering old parents this is some of the stock characters you find in comedy of manners and constructed plots with rapid twists in events often precipitated by miscommunications precipitate means to cause to happen uh, miscommunication again means kind of uh, wrong communication uh, they don't have good Uh, communication uh, between these two people <coughs> now we are going to see what is a stock character definition a stock character is a stereotyped character easily recognized by readers or audiences from recurrent appearances in literary or folk tradition usually within a specific genre such as comedy or fairy tale so that means uh, a stock character can be easily recognized uh, by the audience is uh, dressing up the way he is walking we know that uh, maybe like uh, in maralam movies we have got certain uh, characters uh, mostly given for uh, the comedians maybe a broker 
Oh, so that is kind of stock character. And uh, usually within a specific genre such as comedy or uh, fairy tale. So these characters are mostly found in a comedy <coughs> or even fairy tale. Some common examples include the absent-minded professor, the country bumpkin. Country bumpkin means you know the uh, not so much educated person from a village. That's the meaning of country bumpkin. The damsel in distress. Here, damsel means a girl, maid. In distress means in trouble. Then the old miser, like Shylock. The whore with a heart of gold, whore means a prostitute. The bragging soldier, bragging means you know, uh, talking highly about oneself. In Maralam we say SP. So the soldier comes for holidays and then he says, uh, the way, I mean he <coughs> dramatizes uh, and he boasts about how he killed all the enemies and all that. Then the villain of melodrama, a wicked stepmother, the jealous husband, and the soubrette. Soubrette here means a flirtatious female. I hope you know what is meaning of flirting. Flirt. So it is not only really male who can flirt, even female can do that. So these are some of the stock characters you find in the stories or in the dramas. I think things. Uh, have become clear now. The roots of the comedy of manners <coughs> can be traced back to uh, Moliere's 17th century French comedies and to the humorous comedy of uh, Ben Jonson. So these are the two people who inspired uh, comedy of manners, the French writer Moliere and uh, of course Ben Jonson. Indeed, certain characteristics can be found as far back in time as ancient Greek plays. Even Greek plays you find an element of uh, comedy of manners. Critics agree that the masters of the comedy of manners were George Etheridge, William Whishelry, John Van Burr, William Congreve and George Farquhar. So these were the uh, playwrights who engaged in uh, dramas which are known as comedy of manners. Etheridge's The Comical Revenge or Love in a Tub and uh, She Would If She Could are often seen as inaugurating the genre of the comedy of manners. Inaugurate means starting. So these are the some of the plays the beginning of uh, uh, the emerging comedy of manners and his characters including Sir Frederick Frolic and Sir Fopling Flutter were favorites with audiences and became standard character types. Visherly's comedies are pointed and relatively harsh. Uh, pointed means you know uh, trying to uh, attack directly and very 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 uh, harsh not very <coughs> refined or polished the country wife deals with the jealousy experienced by an old man but pinch wife that is the old man's name married to a young woman margery margery's affair with another man and her concealment of it is accepted as proper and understandable in light of but's abusiveness so this old man is rather you know abusive in the sense uh, you know torturing the wife so this wife uh, finds love in another young man so that is the plot he threatens repeatedly to stab his wife visherly's masterpiece the plain dealer is based on moliere's le misandro and follows the relationship problems of a sea captain Manly. So you find uh, the French connection here. Uh, the plain dealer is actually based on uh, this French writer's uh, story. That is Le Misandro. 
Congreve is uh, considered by many critics to have been the greatest wit of the dramatist writing in this vein. So another great comedian of that time uh, is Congreve. William Hazlitt declared Congreve's dialogue brilliant and his style perfect. So he is one of the greatest uh, playwright of that time and his style was considered uh, brilliant and almost perfect. The Old Bachelor was a great popular success as was Love for Love. So these are the two uh, great uh, creations of Congreve. His last comedy, The Way of the World, is now considered his masterpiece, but was not successful upon its premiere. So when it was uh, shown for the first time, uh, it, it was not a, a success. It became successfully later. Although marriage is at its center, the preoccupation is with contracts and the negotiation of terms, not passionate love. So the theme of uh, way of the world is actually marriage but uh, not the uh, passionate love in marriage it's more most like a contract between two people so this is a scene from the way of the world <coughs> one bruce the relapse or virtue in danger has two plots only slightly connected and includes seduction Infidelity, impersonation, and the attempt to gain another's fortune. So, these are some of the themes of uh, the relapse. There is uh, seduction. You know, seduction means actually to you know going after the opposite sex. That is meaning a seduce. In Malayalam, we say walakya. Huh? That is seduction. Infidelity means, of course, lack of uh, faithfulness, especially in marriage. Impersonal, impersonation means you dress, uh, uh, dress like another person. And the attempt to gain another people's or uh, somebody else's uh, wealth. Then Van Bruce's masterwork, The Provoked Wife, became notorious because it was given special attention by critic Jeremy Collier in his case against the immorality of the stage. So this uh, drama titled The Provoked Wife was critically, uh, you know, very harshly criticized by Jeremy Collier for its uh, immorality or lack of moral uh, values. In keeping with the place of the time, the names of the characters often reflect their type. So, if you look at the names of the characters, you can find out uh, what they really stand for. Like Heart to Free, uh, Sir John Brute, Constant, Lady Fanciful and Colonel Bully. So, the name itself uh, spells out their character. Farquhar's comedies were written at the end of the period and serve as a transition to later comedies noticeable in their greatest sensitivity to characters as individuals rather than types. So, Farquhar's comedies were written much later. So, it shows a kind of transition period uh, and the characters were much more, you know, uh, sensible. They were treated as individuals, not as uh, types. The recruiting officer makes fun of some of the foibles of military heroes while the view stratagem includes a remarkably modern style divorce due to the couple failing to make each other happy. So, you have got two plays, one is dealing with the uh, uh, military soldiers and their stupidities and the second one the view stratagem is uh, actually the theme is uh, divorce because of uh, couples failing to make uh, each other happy. While they wrote in the latter portion of the 18th century, 
after the restoration period and after sentimental comedy had become the dominant comedic comedic form richard brinsley sheridan and oliver goldsmith composed plays that revived and renewed the comedy of manners genre so you find that in the later part of uh, restoration period uh, two great uh, writers coming uh, one is richard brinsley sheridan and the other one is Oliver Goldsmith Sheridan's The School for Scandal and Goldsmith She Stoops to Conquer in particular received popular and critical acclaim when first produced and have been continuously staged to the present day so these two uh, plays have become very famous even today uh, it is still staged these two uh plays of course they are comedies and this is our great uh, sheridan richard brinsley sheridan and uh, sheridan school for scandal a picture of that again one more scene from the school for scandal this is from she stoops to conquer because the comedy of manners so readily presents a view into the attitudes of society of the past scholars find its study rewarding <coughs> so since these plays were more or less realistic and reflected the uh, social life of that time the critics uh, looks at uh, these plays as you know study of the society uh, and the attitude of society of that time Newell W Sawyer has traced the development of the genre and relates it to the changes occurring in society at large definitely this plays only uh, portrays the changes that are happening in that uh, uh, in the society at that time John Palmer has focused on the changes in comedy wrought by Collier whose criticism of what he deemed moral lapses in certain plays affected what playwrights produced thereafter so you find that uh, uh this particular uh critic john palma he says that uh, because of criticism of this uh, first comedies which indulged in mostly you know immoral behavior and all that so due to sharp criticism they were changing from that um, they became more refined that's the meaning of that attitudes toward youth and old age have been examined by elizabeth mignon who noted the comedy of manners reflection of society's preoccupation with aging so how old people were treated at that time uh, that also is shown there according to elizabeth uh, mignon so uh, they can uh, look at these dramas and then uh, evaluate the uh, society and how the society was uh, during that time because this plays were based uh, mostly on reality rather than imagination or fiction margaret lamb macdonald and uh, pat gill have analyzed the comedy of manners for what it reveals about attitudes toward women particularly in regards to their intelligence independence and sexuality so according to these three uh, critics uh, they think that uh, this uh, comedy of manners show uh, the evaluation of women uh, how society is changing attitude towards women here and uh, they are trying to find a place in society because earlier you know that uh, uh, women were not actually uh, allowed on stage uh, women's roles were actually taken up by men so only only at this time you find women coming to the stage uh, and taking or claiming their place
Not all critics have devoted their time solely to its treatment of society's morals. Some, such as David L. Hurst, have performed close readings of the text themselves in order to judge the comedies on their merits as comedies. So, some critics have uh, taken these comedies as comedies, not as uh, a reflection of the society, and they have tried to evaluate the comedy on their merits as comedies, not as uh, kind of evaluation of the society. <coughs> I think with that we have come to the end of comedy of manners. I think uh, we have got some idea about comedy of manners by now. So until we meet again in the next class is goodbye. Thank you.